Okay, so this is our final um, video in the circular functions topic and um, you'll be pleased to know after a few quite long videos through this topic that this one should be a relatively um, brief video um, and that's really because you have all the techniques you need already to solve um, applications involving circular functions. Um, it's simply about now placing some context around um, you know, the problem. Um, and the graph obviously representing um, something. Um, there's quite a lot of application problems we can deal with with circular functions. Anything involving um, oscillating motion, so whether that might be something like a pendulum or a swing, um, tides rising and falling um, over the course of a day or a month or whatever it might be, um, uh, sound waves, those sorts of things where you've got that oscillating motion back and forth, back and forth, um, and anything that involves circular motion. So, um, for example, if we were to, you know, plot the height of a particular carriage on a Ferris wheel as it was as it travelled um, around, um, over, you know, if we were to plot the height compared to the time, um, we would see a circular function um, plotted out. And obviously, we can think about other applications involving um, circles. So, you know. Uh, a particular point on a on a wheel, so you know, a, a thumbtack or a, a stone stuck in the tire of a bicycle or whatever it might be. Again, tracing its path over time, its height relative to the ground over time. So lots of applications in this area um, in terms of the sorts of problems you'll be asked to solve. Um, so we're just going to look through one together um, and just to refresh some of our techniques. But um, as I said, the mathematics required um, you already have. Um, I'm also going to utilise the CAS where possible and where it makes it more efficient. As you know, in this subject, application and analysis questions tend to happen more frequently. Well, certainly, well, sorry, that's a <laughs> always happen um, in the sections of the exam or, or the exams um, where you have access to your CAS calculator. So thinking about um, how to use it to help you rather than hinder you. Okay, let's work our way through this problem. So in a tidal river, so that is a river which experiences tides, um, the time between high tides is 12 hours. The average depth in the water, average depth of water in the river is five meters, and at high tide, the depth is eight meters. Assume that the depth of the water is given by h of t equals a times cos of nt plus b, where t is the number of hours after 12 noon. There is a high tide at 12 noon. Okay, so thinking about, you know, this function here, this general form, so A times cos of NT plus B, so it's a cos graph um, possibly dilated, possibly reflected, although there's some information in the, um, that we've been given that tells us that it's actually not reflected. Um, a period change potentially with N um, and a translation up or down, but not a translation to the left or right. Okay, so if you were to just think about just a rough plot, part B it asks us to sketch a graph, but I just want to get the sense of we've got a, a cos shape. The time between high tides is 12 hours. So thinking about what that tells us, that essentially tells us what the period is. Okay, the average depth of water in the river is five meters. Okay, so that's telling us where that, sorry, I've drawn that a bit low. It's telling us where that central value is, which tells us that the graph has been translated up by five. Okay. Um, it tells us that high tide is eight meters. Okay, so that tells us that this point is eight meters up here, which also gives us the amplitude of the function, because we now know that the amplitude of the function is three. Okay. Um, and it tells us that our height Obviously, height is in meters, time is in hours after 12 noon. So t equals zero is 12 noon. Okay, um, and it tells us there is a high tide at 12 noon. So that's the information that tells me it's not an upside down cos graph. If it if that last sentence there had said there is a low tide at 12 noon, that would be telling me that it's um, also been reflected, and so therefore we would know that our a value in the cosine function has to be negative. Okay. All right, so let's think about what we know. So we know um, the amplitude is three and we have um, no reflection. And so together those two things tell us that A has to be three. We know that the period is 12 and we know that period is two pi on N. So if we solve that equation for N, we're going to get 
12n equals 2 pi, and so n equals 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. So that's n, and we also get um, b is the translation up, and we can tell that this graph has been translated up by 5 units, so b is going to be 5. So in terms of answering our question, find the values of a, n, and b. Um, we can do that just thinking through the information that we've been given. Okay, so now that we have um, our function, we can sketch the graph, and we've pretty much done that roughly in a, helping us to answer part A. So we're just going to formalise that. Um, we want to sketch the graph from 0 to um, 24. So we want to sketch over a 24-hour period, which we'll see, means we'll see two complete cycles. So two high tides within a 24-hour period. Two low tides within a 24-hour period. Okay, so let's plot things out. We can have 24, we can have 12. My period is 12, so remember it's helpful when we're sketching sine and cos graphs to divide our period into 4, which would be, in this case, represent um, a scale of 3. So each, each tick on our scale represents 3 units. So 15, 18, 21. Um, let's just get ourselves, um, so we want our scale to go up to 8. Um, so that would make that 4, half of that is 2, half of that is 1. Okay, and we can complete our scale. Now I'm not actually interested in 4 and 2, I'm interested in um, 5 and 3, so, sorry, not 5 and 3. Um, so our maximum value is going to be at 8, 5 plus 3, and our minimum value is going to be at 5 minus 3, which is 2. So sorry, yes, we are interested in 2. I'm going to get a, my ruler and a pencil and just give myself some rough guidelines in which to um, fit my graph so that I maintain that consistent amplitude and my graph doesn't sort of gradually get bigger or smaller. Uh, I'm going to plot out my key points. So I know my period is 12 and it's a cos graph, so it starts at the top. Uh, it finishes at the end of the period at the top again, so that's at 12. Halfway along the period, which will be 6, is where we're at the minimum value. And halfway between that is where we'll cross that central sort of average value. And then we can plot out our crescent curve. Again, remembering you've got a turning point at the start there, so making sure your graph has zero gradient at the beginning. All right, and then we just repeat. So every one of these ticks on my x-axis, so every three units, we get the next key point on our function. And just joining the dots. All right, let's label all the key points, endpoints, intercepts, uh, turning points, etc. So 24, um, 8. This is 18, 2. This is 12, 8, 6, 2. And my y intercept, 0, 8. Okay, so we've sketched our graph. Now, by all means, we could have used our CAS, but I, I don't think my CAS is going to be able to do that any quicker. By all means, you can draw it on the CAS and have a look at it, but you still need to be able to replicate it on paper. Um, and we already had a clear picture of what it looks like um, from our thinking in part A. Okay, at what times is the depth of the water 6 metres? Okay, so we want to know when is our water depth going to be 6. Okay, so that's when h equals 6. So we can see over the 24-hour period, and it, pro it should really clarify over the 24-hour period, we're going to stick with this domain throughout the rest of the question, but it, it should actually say in part C, um, during a 24-hour period, at what times is the depth of water 6 metres? So we can see there's going to be four times when the depth of water is 6 metres. Okay, so we're going to need to calculate those four times, but we've got a calculator available to us to do that for us. So let's maybe go back to what I would have done at the beginning, which would be to define my function once I'd worked out what the values of a, b, and n were. So let's define h of t as being 3 times um, cos of n times t plus b. I'm oh, sorry, no n and b. My apologies. So b is 5 and n is pi on 6. And six. Okay, so there's our function. By all means, as I said, if you wanted to look at the graph, you need to be careful. If you type h of t here, your um, 
graphing screen doesn't understand t, it has to be in terms of x. So you can replace all the t's in the function with x's by just typing h of x. Um, you can then see your graph, you can adjust your window obviously out to, you know, maybe we go a bit past 24. Um, you know, we can adjust things up there, we can adjust things down there, um, and we can see the graph, but um, we already knew what it looked like, so we didn't really need our CAS to help us do that. But part C, I'm going to get my CAS to help me solve the equation because solving trig equations isn't very fun. Now, when um, when you are solving, when you have a question like this, um, an application question, um, solving an if, if an equation needs to be solved, you must write down the equation on the paper. And that is as simple as, in this case, the equation we are solving is h of t equal to 6. You don't need to write out 3 times cos of pi on 6t plus 5 equals 6. H of t, we know what h of t is, it's defined up here, we've clearly stated what a, b and n are here, and so um, the equation is h of t equals 6, then we give the solutions. You don't write any CAS syntax, so you don't write solve bracket h of t equals 6 comma t for, you know, you don't do any of that, um, you don't need to do that, we all understand that if you have your CAS available to you in the assessment, if you write down an equation and then you write down its answer, that you've used the CAS to find to solve the equation. We don't need to know the particular syntax that your particular brand of CAS calculator uses in order to solve equations. We just need to know the maths, which is the equation, and then what the answer to that equation is. Okay, so h of t equals 6, so it'll be a two mark question. h of t equals 6, must write the equation, and then the second mark for your answers. Okay, so let's solve. So h of t equals 6 for t. And we want to solve that given that, because we know if we're solving a trig function, we'll get a general solution unless we restrict the domain. And we want to know over that 24 hour period at what times um, is the depth of the water 6. Okay, so they're not nice exact values. Let's press Control Enter to get our answers as a decimal. Now it asks us for the times. Okay, so we know that t equals zero is 12 noon. Okay, which means t equals three is 3 p.m. T equals six is 6 p.m. T equals 12 is midnight. T equals 18 is 6 a.m. Okay, so we want to interpret them as times. So our t value. So in fact, this might be a three mark question if it was in a test or an exam. Equation, t values, and then times. So t is approximately equal to 2.35 hours, 9.65 hours, 14.35 hours, and uh, 21.65 hours. Now again, probably the question should be a bit more precise about rounding. It doesn't matter how we round those t values because they're not the answer. Um, but when you're giving the time, you would just give it to the nearest minute. So you wouldn't talk about you know 3.35 and 16 seconds. Um, that's too precise. Um, 3.35 would be the time of day at which we the depth of the water is 6 metres. I'm not saying that's an answer. Okay, so we now want to convert these to times. So we know that when t is 2, that's 2 hours after noon, so that's 2 p.m. So when we have 2.35, that's not 2.35 p.m., okay? That's 2 hours and 0.35 of an hour. So we actually need to work out what is 0.35 of an hour in terms of minutes? Now I'm going to be more precise than that because I can see in my CAS here that it's actually 0 0.35096 so I may as well use that, there's no reason not to. So I want to work out what 0 0.35096 of an hour is, so times 60, how many minutes is that? So that's 21 minutes, okay? So this is 2.21 p.m., 2 hours and 21 minutes afternoon. We also want to know what the 0.65 is in minutes. So again, I'm going to be more precise than that with my CAS because I can see um, that it's actually 0.64904. It's more accurate than that, but that will give me enough accuracy to the nearest minute. Times that by 60 to work out how many minutes is 0.64 of an hour, 0.65 of an hour. And to the nearest minute, that's 39 minutes. Okay, so 9 hours and 39 minutes afternoon is 9.39 p.m. 14 hours after noon is 2 a.m. And we already know that that 0.35, and you have a look, it's the same decimal representation. Don't forget the symmetry of your circular function. We know that um, the second two times are simply 12 hours after the first two times because it's a period away. So this will be 2.21 a.m. And this will be 9.39 
a.m. So over the 24-hour period, which starts at noon, those are the four times um, at which we have a, a depth of, uh, the water is at a depth of six metres. And it'll be those same four times every day because the period is 12 hours, which fits completely into a day. So the next day will look exactly the same. Um, so obviously that's a bit, um, that's a bit implausible given that um, max high and low tides do change slightly from day to day, um, but just as a model, um, that's what we're dealing with. For how long during a 24 hour period is the depth of water greater than six meters? Okay, so this is where we need to be able to look at our graph as well. So we know when the depth of water is equal to six meters, it's at those four times that are marked by red arrows on the graph above. We now wanna know when, when the depth is actually greater than six meters. So that's gonna be, we can see that the depth is greater than six meters here, here, and here. Okay, so in terms of the time when the depth is greater than six meters, it's greater than six meters between then and there, between there and there, and between there and there. Now, if we note what's happening here, that first time is from 12 noon until 2.21 p.m., okay, which is um, two hours and 21 minutes, okay. 21 minutes. We note that the next session is from when it's deeper than six meters is from 9.39 p.m. through to 2.21 a.m. Okay. And so we could work out that from, you know, midnight, between 9.39 p.m. and midnight, or 10 p.m. to midnight is two hours, 9.39 to 10 p.m. is 21 minutes, so that's two hours and 21 minutes to get to midnight, and then it's another two hours and 21 minutes after midnight. So that's gonna be four hours and 42 minutes, okay? And then the last section in the 24 hour period is from 9.39 a.m. until 12 noon again, which is 24 hours after 12 noon, um, which is t equals zero. So that's gonna be another two hours and 21 minutes. So again, what you actually wanna think through here is the symmetry of what's happening here. Each of these, uh, let me just mark it in a different color, that distance there is the same as that distance there, which is the same as that distance there, which is the same as that distance there. So actually what we have, sorry, actually what we have is four lots of two hours and 21 minutes, okay? Rather than thinking about each time period separately, okay? So we're actually gonna have um, eight hours and so it's actually, let's do that here. So it's gonna be eight hours plus um, 421s is, 84 minutes, okay, so that's more than an hour, so we'd make this nine hours and um, 24 minutes. So over a 24 hour period, that is the amount of time um, that the depth of water is greater than six meters. Similar questions might ask you for what proportion of time is the depth greater than, um, you know, six meters, in which case you would work out your nine hours and 24 minutes um, as a fraction of 24 hours. Okay, um, and yeah, so just making sure that you answer the question being asked. But the questions can be pretty similar, particularly the ones around tides. Tell me, you know, at what times is the tide, is the depth of water this? When the time is this, what is the depth of water? For how long or for what proportion of time is the depth of water greater than this or less than this or whatever it might be, okay? All right, so there are six um, further application questions in exercise 14.0 that I would like you um, to work through. If you feel that you need some more practice um, on this, and given that we're actually at the end of this topic and um, you're going to be doing some revision um, in preparation for a test, I would suggest that you move straight from exercise 14.0 onto the extended response questions in chapter 14. So while you're in application mode, keep going into the extended response, and then um, you'll wanna to return to the beginning of the chapter review and work on the short answer and multiple choice questions as revision. Um, okay, so uh, off you go and get on to some application problems involving circular functions.